Good day. I'm Ray. Welcome, or welcome back, to another mini doc about the monsters that walk amongst us. Today I'll tell you the disturbing story of the heartless Enriqueta Marti, a really nasty piece of work. You're looking at the El Raval district of Barcelona a few years before First, first, uh, first World War. El Raval is the second oldest district in the city along with the Gothic Quarter, located across the city's main street, La Rambla. Their neighborhood had been the center of industry in the town in the 19th century. But after the city authorities began to develop the Le example district of El Raval, the district's importance decreased and it fell into decline. The neighborhood is old and has narrow streets. The inhabitants, who are ma manual workers and immigrants, live very close together. At the beginning of the 20th century, the district is the most densely populated urban district in Europe. The residents live in poorly built apartment buildings where petty crime, drugs and prostitution are rampant. The area is home to liberal artists and is full of theatres, brothels, bars and cabarets. The neighborhood is a hideout for anarchists, communists and others who want to keep a low profile. The district is notorious and it is not until the end of the 20th century that other citizens of Barcelona think of entering the neighborhood. In the first decade of the 20th century, terrible things are happening in El Raval that no one talks about. Children regularly disappear and are never seen again. Most of the people of Barcelona don't care because these are poor and helpless children. The children continued to disappear until February 1912 when a woman named Enriqueta Marti was arrested and suspected of child abduction. Then finally, the child disappearances were given attention in the media. As the police dug deeper, the case turned from simple child abduction to a series of child abductions and mass murders. The press began to call Marty the Vampire of Raval, the Vampire of Barcelona, or the Vampire of Potengatu, after the street where she was arrested. The police unearthed many cruel things about Marty's actions in the following days and weeks. She was accused of abducting and killing a large number of children over 20 years. It is difficult to assert the actual number of children who were her victims. During interrogation, Marty confessed to supplying children for rich child molesters, but she denied having killed anyone. She was never tried because her fellow inmates killed her before the trial. Enriqueta Marti was born in the town of St. Felu de Lobregat in 1868. Nothing is known about her childhood or her family. I don't know when or why she moved to Barcelona. But I do know that as a young woman, she worked as a waitress and nanny. But life was hard in the big city and it wasn't long before she started working as a prostitute. She married the, the painter Juan Pualo in 1895, but the marriage was childless and unhappy. The ex-husband didn't speak well about her later, and according to him, they divorced because Marty cheated constantly, was difficult to get along with, and continued to work at the brothels. The marriage was stormy and they separated and reconciled about six times. When she was arrested, they had been divorced for five years. In 1909, Marty founded her own company, a brothel for the city's wealthier residents. Marty did not hesitate to make various unusual wishes of her clients come true for a higher fee. Among them were customers who requested sexual activities with children. She put in a lot of effort to provide children for her clients. She dressed as a poor woman during the day and visited the poorest of the poor in the city. She begged and stood in lines with the poor at the convents to receive alms. When she came across children not attended to by adults, she kidnapped them and sold them in her brothel. At night she dressed up and went to the theatres and casinos of the rich 
to form relationships with the morally twisted of the upper class. Marty also had another job. She was a witch doctor. Marty sold creams and potions to stop aging and prolong life. The ingredients often came from children she killed. She used the children's fat, blood, hair and bones in her products. She also claimed that drinking children's blood could cure tuberculosis, a significant threat at the time. Wealthy citizens of Barcelona paid handsome sums for her medicinal drugs. What did it matter to them if some poor children were sacrificed? Marty was arrested in July 1909 in her home, accused of running a brothel where children were sold. She was never formally charged because she exploited her connections with her wealthy and powerful benefactors in the city and the case was dropped. The police had little interest in the fate of poor children, many of whom had poor parents or were simply orphans. Penalties for crimes against children were very light at the time. Raping a girl or boy costs a fine of 50 pesetas, half a month's wage of a worker. It wasn't until three years later in 1912 that Enriqueta was finally stopped. For two weeks, authorities had been looking for a girl named Teresita Guitart Congost. Her parents were not wealthy, but her father was popular in the city. The city authorities were under pressure to find her, as people had long criticized them for doing little in the case of missing children. The disappeared child had parents of note this time, and the search began in earnest. But it wasn't the police who tracked down Teresita. A neighbor saw a girl in a window at Marty's house at 29 Pontent Street. She did not recognize the girl as someone who lived there, and she notified the authorities. When the police arrived, there were two girls in Marty's apartment. One was the lost Teresita, and the other was called Angelita. Teresita was returned to her parents. She told authorities that Marty had lured her in with the promise of sweets and locked her up. The girl also reported that she came across a bag with children's clothes and a bloody boning knife at Marty's house. The other girl in the apartment did not know her last name, so it wasn't easy to find her parents. Marty claimed that Angelita was her daughter with her husband Juan Paolo. However, Paolo himself asserted to the police that they had no children, and he did not know who the girl was. Angelita's account was even shadier. She told the police that she saw Marty kill a five-year-old boy called Pepito on the kitchen table on Potent Street. Teresa Guitart Congost is in the hands of the police. During a search, the police found the bag that Teresita had told them about. They also found another bag with dirty clothes and at least 30 small human bones. What attracted the attention was, was that although the apartment smelled bad and was poorly furnished, one living room was elegantly furnished. In it were found elegant clothes for girls and boys. The police concluded that the clients had been bought in there. In a locked room, about 50 jugs, jars and bowls were found with remains of human bodies, fat, coagulated blood, children's hair, skeletons and powdered bones. The police also found containers with drinks and ointments ready for sale there. The investigators also searched other apartments and houses where Marty had previously lived. Body remains were found in the walls and ceilings. In the yard of one of the houses, a skull of a three-year-old child was found, and other bones matched three to six and eight-year-old children. The child clothes the police found in its search confirmed that all the children were from low-income families that probably did not have the means or conditions for an extensive search. Various strange objects and recipes were found, but what attracted attention was a list of rich and important people in Barcelona. The public believed it was a list of Marty's wealthy clients. In their opinion, people on the list bought children from her to molest or purchased her medicinal concoctions. To calm the public, the police launched a massive campaign in the newspapers 
to say that the list was just a list of people Marty had either begged money from or tried to swindle. It is impossible to know for what purpose Marty made the list. All in all, forensic pathologists could identify the remains of 12 different children with the little evidence they were able to salvage. It is impossible to say with any certainty how many victims there were. During interrogation, Marty proclaimed that she was studying anatomy, but soon confessed that she was a witch doctor and used children as ingredients for her medicines. She disclosed the location of other apartments and told investigators where to search them. She also admitted to providing children to abusers, but did not identify a single client by name. Marty could not properly explain who the young boy was that Angelita saw her murder on the kitchen table, and she couldn't explain what had happened to him either. A woman from Alcanes came forward and identified Marty as her child's kidnapper of six years earlier. Marty had shown the woman exceptional kindness when she arrived in Barcelona after a long journey. The woman was tired and hungry and allowed Marty to hold her baby. Marty disappeared with the baby and the woman never found Marty or her son again. It was supposed that Marty used the children to produce her medicines. Marty confessed to many things, having sold children into prostitution but never admitted to murder. Marty was never convicted. Her fellow inmates hung her in the prison yard in May 1913. Rumour has it that Marty's wealthy patrons paid for the hanging to ensure that nothing about their dealings with Marty would ever come up at the trial. The official death certificate stated the cause of death was uterine cancer. Her death meant the investigation into her case did not go any further. Thanks for watching. Join me next time as I delve into another chapter of all about serial killers and mass murderers. Until then, share this video, keep the monsters at bay, and stay safe.